Uh, meditation doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, be on a mountain, on a rock, you know, <laughs> uh, eyes closed, you know, with like snow falling gently around. It can be a couple of minutes. It can be a few deep breaths. And regulating uh, your autonomic nervous system is one of the most powerful tools we have. Uh, dealing with stress, uh, we know that if we can regulate our stress, we'll stay healthier and, and live longer and happier. It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by... Most exercises and workouts, whether they be running, biking, elliptical, rowing machine, traditional weightlifting, or even CrossFit, do not give you a balanced workout. And when you do workouts that neglect even one area, you're out of balance, resulting in pain and injury as well. Achieve your goals with the fitness program your chiropractor would love. Visit chrisjenke.com slash pod to watch the free video. Hello and welcome to Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Jenke and I'm joined today by Tom Ingenio. And Dr. Tom, uh, 20 plus years clinical and lecturing experience with traditional practices from Asia, also cutting edge therapies such as cryotherapy in your, uh, your location over there. So Dr. Tom, welcome. Ah, thanks for having me, Chris. I'm excited. Good, good. Me too. I, I appreciate you joining me. Um, fill in any any gaps in your your biography as far as who you are, <laughs> what you do. Well, you got you got some of the big the big points there. Uh, yes. Basically, I've been an acupuncturist and and been uh, studying East Asian medicine since uh, 1998. And uh, over the last, I don't know, maybe uh, five to ten years. I've seen this trend where we're, we're getting more focused on ourselves and certainly uh, the pandemic shifted this, like how do we keep ourselves up and healthy? So when I put my last center together or this, this newest center, I should say Charm City Integrative Health, which we've been at for six years, um, I was trying to look at things that uh, East Asian medicine, specifically acupuncture did from Western studies and looked at other things that would complement that and attack the problem in, in the same way. So one of our biggest issues we have uh, at aging, illness, workout recovery uh, is inflammation. So acupuncture, one of the big things it does, and, and we've seen some studies come out of COVID where it breaks up the cytokine storm, this inflammatory process, right? So we know if we can reduce the inflammation, we can improve circulation, we get fresh blood into the tissue, we get old stagnant blood out, uh, and we can promote that tissue to heal. So when we combine things like cryotherapy with acupuncture, the idea is we're going to wring you out like a sponge. This cold is not cold just to torture you, uh, but it's supposed right. to reduce the inflammation, constrict uh, the skin, the fascia, the blood vessels, the muscles, uh, force all that blood back to the core, and then come back when you get out with this rebound of like this massive dilation because your body thinks it was freezing to death. Uh, so it wants to warm everything back up and nourish it with fresh blood. Uh, it's a high speed version of what happens with acupuncture in about 10 minutes or so. So we, we combined in a bunch of different services together. Uh, and one of the unique things that we do uh, is called stacking. So we're trying to take um, the 15 services we have and combine them intelligently for different service, uh, for different conditions. Mm -hmm. So we have something, uh, you know, uh, we're in Maryland and we're about to hit the big allergy season. It's going to be horrible. It always is. Um, what can we do to reduce inflammation in the sinuses? Okay, well, we have our salt pod and we know that acupuncture can help open up the sinuses. And then we have a machine that helps get extra oxygen into the blood called exercise with oxygen therapy. The company is called LiveO2. Uh, and we know that we can kind of knock down inflammation, get your body running better and keep that inflammation low in the sinuses, you'll feel better during allergy season. Right, right. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, um, I want to I actually go starting with acupuncture because I think acupuncture sure. is, it, 
it's getting more popular, I would say, in the mainstream, but I think there's still two camps. There, there's the camp who's done acupuncture, who, including myself, who it is like the greatest thing ever. I, mm -hmm. I, tore, I tore my meniscus and I literally couldn't even be vertical, even without weight on that leg. I couldn't even be vertical because yeah. all the blood just rushed into my knee. Uh, and within two days, oh, I had two physical therapists tell me, you need surgery like yesterday. And mm -hmm. uh, then went into like two sessions for acupuncture and it, the swelling was almost 100% gone in two days. Yeah. And then over the next couple of weeks, it went completely gone. Um, but then there's the other camp that, you know, they're like, they'll make jokes about it. Oh, there's needles in your face. And the, like, um, what, what would you tell that second camp? <laughs> the, the people who are like, what are you yeah. doing? You know, like, what do you tell yeah. them? Like, why does it work? So, so it's interesting you mentioned physical therapy, and I'm not taking shots at physical therapy. Um, but one of the things I would say is that the way it's been represented here in the West is nothing like it was ever intended to be. Um, this wasn't a new agey thing. Uh, that came from uh, how it came over. Uh, there are stories of a French businessman going to China and tr falling in love with acupuncture uh, and translating the text. He didn't speak Chinese. He also wasn't a physician. The people he had translated weren't physicians. So no. they spoke enough uh, French to translate it, but it became this very flowery thing. And at the time he did it, it's probably at least 200 years ago. And the mysteries of the Orient were all the rage in Europe. Right. So to have this new agey weird thing just fit the, you know, the aristocratic European lifestyle, like, oh my God, this is this cool, bizarre thing. Uh, and unfortunately, that stuck around. Uh, what didn't stick around was the thousands of years of observation clinically, uh, the clinical case studies, these kind of things that that didn't make it over until much later. Right. Now, what I'll say is um, if we talk about the Cochrane database, which is one of the major areas that we get our research from, right? Um, the Cochrane database has more systematic reviews. So that is studies about acupuncture that are on a specific topic than uh, chiropractic and physical therapy put together. Wow. So we are more researched in what we do. So we would classically say things like, um, you know, we move the chi, we move the blood, we reduce pain, we restore balance in the body, right? And that's, that's still true. Nothing we know modern day negates those classical symptoms or theories, but um, we now have the research to say, this is what's happening when we say that. We know we're affecting the intracellular matrix, which is where the fluids exchange between the cells. We know we're affecting uh, the cytokine storm. We know we're reducing that. We know that we're playing with the autonomic nervous system. That's fight or flight versus rest and digest. Acupuncture is pretty relaxing. That's normally a hard sell to explain to people because They've seen videos of people with needles in their face right. and all over their body. And let me tell you, the treatments never look like that. That's what they do for TV. Right. Um, within that, um, we see all these Western physiological changes that are like this cascade effect that affect every system. And we have plenty of research to show that it does that. Now, it's more convenient for me to say that, oh, what did I do? I smoothed the flow of chi and your body's back in balance than me to say, all right, I downregulated your sympathetic nervous system. So now you're in parasympathetic nervous system. So now you're getting more blood flow to your gut. You're digesting better. You're picking up more nutrients from that. Uh, you're breathing deeper. So you're getting more oxygen. It's a hell of a lot easier for me to just say, ah, your chi is in flow right. now. <laughs> right, right. I think, I think a lot of that depends on who you're talking to also. Like I'm, I think I was a very slow convert to acupuncture. Mm -hmm because I was hearing all the flowery language, like the chi, yeah. I mean, chi is not flowery. It's just, it's just foreign to me because it's, it's more yeah. like a Chinese term. And so I was like, I've never seen chi in an anatomy book. What is chi? Like, so I didn't yeah. get it. I was very skeptical. And literally the only reason I went in was because I was in so much pain yeah. and I did not want to get a surgery. And just the results are what, um, convinced me. And this was like six, yeah. no, this was like nine years ago. My son was a, a newborn. Um, yeah. And then, and then since then, I've seen a lot more of that research that you're talking about. And it, I mean, it's legit. It's like, 
and it makes a lot of sense as far as how you're down regulating the fight or flight you're you're allowing the blood to flow smoother mm -hmm. um I, i'm really curious about this like by looking at somebody i was fascinated by how my acupuncturist would 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 set some needles in and then she would kind of leave for a minute come right back and then see a needle that maybe was out of place and she would move it maybe a quarter mm -hmm. inch to the left uh is that how much of that is like instinct versus like how do they train you or are you seeing like a bulge in like inflammation <laughs> and you move it away from it or so what? so this this is one of this is one of the frustrating things when we talk about chinese medicine as a whole yeah. right there are so many different systems that evolved over the conservatively 3000 years i mean we have yeah. texts talking about needle therapy going back almost over 9000 years but as a formalized system the text that we all kind of misquote is about 2,700 years. Um, within that, acupuncture has always been a leave, living, breathing thing that changes, one, based on uh, geopolitical events, cultural events, where it is in the world. So yes, it's from China, but as it migrated, it went to Korea and, and some of the smaller Asian countries and Japan, and everyone has their own flavor on it, even to the point where there's a French Vietnamese system that is practiced only in France, you know, and that was like kind of developed in the fifties. Um, within that, um, all of us cue in on different things. Some of us cue in on the questions and how you answer them and the words you choose. Uh, most of us are going to take your pulses and that kind of gets us to the right channel that we want to work on. Um, and then point selection can be very specific based on the style of medicine. Now there's an expression in China, 10 acupunctures, 10 treatments. Mm. So that means that you come in with the same complaints, you say the same thing to me as you do to the other nine people, hopefully all 10 of us can help you. Right. You know, and we might do something drastically different. So moving the needles to adjust what they're feeling, um, that's not uncommon, right? We want feedback, we wanna know, and what we're looking for might be sensitivity in that area based on how we press, um, it can be texture of the skin. It can be hot, cold, you know, how the blood flows through there. Um, and all of those things we would say, oh, we're just, we're just listening to the chi of the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. What are some, uh, so you mentioned stacking, right? Stacking yeah. therapies. We talked about acupuncture, cryotherapy. Uh, you mentioned the salt therapy for sinuses. Yeah. Um, what are some of the other real effective stacks that you've seen uh, in the past and, and sort of like, what is, what is like the before and after of, of a, of yeah. A digital? So, so because we deal with like kind of this root inflammation, not all inflammation is caused by disease, right? We get inflammation from working out. That's generally good, but we want to reduce that. And so we can get back to the gym and train more. Right. So a lot of our athletes really like our combination of exercise with oxygen therapy and red light therapy. Now, exercise with oxygen therapy, we used to have a hyperbaric chamber, and I loved it, but to have somebody get the best benefits from it, the protocol is six days a week for an hour, and that's a time commitment, that's a financial commitment, that's yeah. it, 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 un, unattainable for most people, and especially for the people that need it most, they might need even longer. Right. Um, when I found out about exercise with oxygen therapy, it was, it was like the coolest little biohack, if you will. So basically you're doing these sprints at high altitude air and it depletes the red blood cells. And then when you recover, you recover at 95% oxygen. So you can never get above hundred percent on the red blood cells where hyperbaric is using pressure to force that oxygen in just the same way they pressurize soda in, in factories. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's what hyperbaric does. Basically, it's squeezing that gas into the liquid part of your blood. When we use exercise with oxygen, we're, we're tricking your body. We're making the blood go a little bit more basic. So when you come back and get that pure oxygen, your body thinks, one, I was starving of air. So mm -hmm. not only am I going to saturate the red blood cells, I'm going to pack it in to the liquid part. Now, you have to be Usain Bolt to get this effect. But they're, the company that makes this claims that you can get up to 433% more oxygen into the liquid part of your blood. And that lasts about three days. And the average time on the bike is about 15 to 20 minutes. 
So if I can get you three days worth of excess oxygen twice a week in 15 minutes, that's a win. Now, when we pair that oxygen, which nourishes all the cells with the red light therapy, red light therapy and our panels have red and near infrared, um, those frequencies that are the same that come from the sun um, penetrate into the skin. Everything they hit, they cause the mitochondria to start kicking out more cellular energy. So combining the oxygen, which is the fuel for those cells, with the, the light, which stimulates those cells to then make more energy, you have more systemic energy, you're getting better circulation, you recover from your workouts quicker, you get over pain quicker, um, and we treat quite a few crazy things with it. I mean, one of the biggest things we've seen now is, is long-haul COVID. You know, mm -hmm. so people that get COVID and then are coming in six months, eight months later and still have these all over the place, wacky system, uh, symptoms. Right. Respiratory is a big one, right? Yeah, respiratory, brain yeah. fog, fatigue, yeah. pain. So, uh, yeah, I've done red light therapy. I can speak to that too. Um, it's like about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So it depends on how far away you are from the panels. Uh, we set ours so you're laying on a bed where you get uh, 20 minutes is, yeah. is the distance that it's calibrated for. But 10 minutes uh, is, is for if the panels are closer. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. So red light therapy with the oxygen. Uh, what did you call uh, Working exercise with oxygen, you call it? Exercise with oxygen therapy. The abbreviation is EWAT but then I have to explain what EWAT is. So I don't right, 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 right. <laughs> I just say the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Um, what are some of the, well, actually, so let me take that step back. Like, do you, um, do, you do you have a lot of athletes coming through? Like Ravens, yeah, we do. Ravens yeah, we do. Orioles. Um, so, so the Ravens and the Orioles all tend to live far away in one of the other counties <laughs> and okay. they drive in for the games. So we okay. do see them pretty, pretty infrequently. You know, I mean, they, they all have uh, the luxury of having deep pockets and some of this equipment is not out of their reach financially. Um, now we, we do, uh, Baltimore does produce a lot of boxers hmm. <laughs> and I have a lot of uh, professional boxers that have come through. Um, we did have an arena football league for a while that we were the, the sponsored, uh, what did we, what did they term us? the recovery specialists for them. And we were seeing the whole team uh, a few times a week for cryotherapy and some of the other services. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Um, nice. Tom, we're getting uh, close to the end. I want to give you a chance to go sure. really big picture. I like, I like doing this as the last question, uh, kind of zooming out really, really far. And yeah. you are, let's say you're hired to do a keynote speech at a corporation or maybe like a graduation ceremony, like commencement at a university. And your talk is to these individuals on how they can get the most out of their lives. So yeah. different principles that have served you or, you know, goal setting or whatever direction you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is interesting because um, I'm currently working on two books and one of them is about this concept of stacking, but not just the services I have in office, but how do we put together, um, a series of, you know, protocols or, or meditation or, or, and put it all together in your life to stack that together so you can live the, the best and happiest life. Um, my number one thing, if I was going to talk about uh, a, a service or a thing and give a keynote on it, it would be meditation. Uh, meditation doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, be on a, mountain on a rock, you know, <laughs> uh, eyes closed, you know, with like snow falling gently around. It can be a couple of minutes. It can be a few deep breaths and regulating, uh, your autonomic nervous system is one of the most powerful tools we have, uh, dealing with stress. Uh, we know that if we can regulate our stress, we'll stay healthier and, and live longer and happier. Right. hundred percent. Awesome. Uh, Tom, how do people get in touch with you? What's your website, social media? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my website has all my social media. It's Charm City Integrate Tiv, T I V E dot com. Um, I uh, am currently, like I said, releasing two books. I have a free meditation course uh, somewhere on that website. You can get a link to it on uh, Udemy. Um, 
And uh, I'm about to launch a podcast with a buddy of mine called The Reverend Health, where we tackle some of these new age technologies and, and uh, as well as some traditional practices and, and take a look on it. That's or should I say, take a look at it. That's open minded, um, but uh, calling out the BS. Yeah, well, that's really important. Definitely. Just to give that that perspective that you have on, on all these new therapies. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you again. This is uh, Dr. Tom Ingenio. Uh, I am Chris Jenke of Health in the Real World. Tom, thank you again so much for joining me today. I had so much fun, Chris. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.